What is Grok? What isn't Grok? Like all AI things, there's a lot to wrap your head around. Some of it doesn't matter, some of it doesn't feel important, but some of it kind of is. I mean, it all is because it is the future, and the future's already here. We just have to accept that. So let's dig into what Grok is and isn't. I'm Brian, welcome to my Tesla Weekend. <laughs> Big thanks to new members on Patreon, John and Keith. Uh, these are the people who make the channel happen. I thank you guys so much for your decision to support the channel. You can do it on Patreon or YouTube or X. It's wonderful and I appreciate it. It's how I'm able to actually keep going. And I thank you. It's my job. It's what I do. Big question for today is uh, the lemon tree behind me. Should I add to it? Should I replace it? Uh, you know, tis the season, there's a bumper crop of fake plants this year, and uh, maybe it's time for me to add something. It seems like they ramped up with everybody doing work from home and trying to have a nice background, and now they've got too many and there are some deals to be had. Should I make it a whole jungle? Let me know in the comments, it's kind of fun. Grok. Yes, announcing Grok. It's AI. It's like ChatGPT, it's like all those other chatbots. But with some differences. You have to have a difference or no one's going to buy it. What's the point? We don't need more of the same thing. We need more different things and more better things. So uh, let's start by saying, does Elon even know what he's talking about with AI? Did you know he was on the board of directors for OpenAI? He was. Yeah, when the company was first founded, uh, he was part of the guiding force behind it. He left after a few years, he wasn't happy with the direction it was going, and he felt that there was a conflict of interest between the AI efforts at Tesla and the AI efforts at OpenAI. And he thought, if I step back, this won't be commercialized. How'd that work out? Badly. Lesson learned. So Elon's got this, and by the way, what a beautiful website. What year is it? Happy 2001. But the idea is, uh, Tesla's got AI. He's got a his own whole separate company doing AI. Uh, Twitter, X, is doing AI. Because everybody's doing AI, because it is the thing. It is what is going to be the next step change in technology. And it already is. Ask any student who has papers to write or any teacher who has papers to grade. So, it's uh, going to rival ChatGPT. How good is it? Well, it's already kind of getting there. Uh, Launching AI is easy. Perfecting AI is hard. But you don't have to perfect it, as we have seen. So the idea here is there are, let me find it, it's already been tested against benchmarks and done quite well. thought I had it. There we go. It is already better than ChatGPT 3.5, but not as good as ChatGPT 4. That's very good progress in a very short amount of time. And he's done it by hiring the best people from those other companies, from OpenAI, from different companies that have already established successes. And this isn't like he's stealing code. Uh, you don't have to in AI because every iteration is different. And it all builds itself to a degree. So that means that... Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily better, though in many cases it is. It just has to be different. So one of the fun things that people found early on with these chatbots was making them say silly things. And immediately bumpers were put up, guardrails, if you will, safety measures to neuter them and make them less fun. That's not how Elon works. He likes the fun. He is here for the fun. So when you ask it to do certain things, it'll give you very silly answers uh, and very deep answers. So sometimes the answers are just good, but sometimes they're silly. They're flippant. They have the kind of voice you would expect from Elon himself or someone that he assigned to answer the question. Uh, give him a smart ass answer is what I'm saying. It's got a lot to it. So uncorked is fun, but it can be risky. Elon is not risk averse in this regard. Now, of course, outside forces could come into play. And some people won't like an uncorked version like this. They won't like a, a more risky version. But some people will. And those are the people who are the biggest voices on X already. People are on the people who are 
fragile, have left X. They are not there. They are not the potential customers. The people who have stayed, the people who have joined because of it, these are the people who are going to enjoy the sort of feature set that it offers. But the big difference, the big critical difference is the path to monetization. Monetizing something new is very hard. And how do you get people to sign up the first time? You do it with the ecosystem you know. Do you know that uh, over half of Twitter Blue's earliest subscribers are not paying anymore? Yeah, there are people who signed up for Blue, realized eh, it's not really giving me anything that I want, canceled. But this article from back in May says that there are still, okay, over half of Twitter's early, there we go. Over half of the early subscribers have opted out. But as of May, there were still 444,000 paying subscribers. Those people already have a couple, they have a payment system set up. They're already in the ecosystem. They're already part of the payment platform, as it were. These people are going to, uh, they, they have a much lower threshold for being willing to pay a little bit more. Going from paying zero to paying something, even a dollar, is a big, big ask. But going from paying something to paying something a little bit more, very, very easy. And this is just the people who are paying for blue. If we look at Musk's Twitter has just 180,000 subscribers two months after launch. By the way, you can subscribe to my channel. You get a little bit of bonus content on X. Not much, uh, but you help me keep going. And that's the whole point. That was after two months. How are they doing now? As of April, they were already up to 640,000. So that suggests there could be easily in excess of a million people who are already in the payment ecosystem for whom it would be very easy to just say, oh, you know what, um, add, add a little bit more. And like the Amazon Prime model, I don't uh, need Amazon Music, for example, but maybe I want fast shipping. You pay for fast shipping, you pay for Amazon Prime, you get all this other stuff included. If you have Premium Plus, you'll have access to Grok. If you're already part of an affiliate uh, a, a brand, I have brand affiliation through the awesome Rebellionaire team. Uh, and because of that, even though I'm only paying for Premium, I get Premium Plus, I get access to Grok. So there's, it's just adding more benefits in an ecosystem that's already tied in. And... Right now, they're doing monetization. They're, they're handling money very poorly. That's going to change. Right now, everything I pay in and everything I take out is all separate. At some point, it'll just be a balance that is all one thing so that I don't get billed once a month for subscribing to James Stevenson, which I do gladly because he's awesome. But I will instead, it'll just come out of my balance. And then there's less bank fees and less hassle. If somebody has subscribers or somebody has revenue share, it's painless to turn on Grok. You don't even see the bill. It just comes out of your balance. That's great. That makes monetization very easy. And the kinds of people who will want something like this are already on Twitter. They're already on X, whatever you wish to call it these days. And they are, they're the right people. They're people who will pay for this. They are people who don't care as much as school children who are looking to just get help with an assignment. School children looking to get help with an assignment is a terrible market because they don't have money and they don't even have credit cards legally. They may have access to them, but is that enough? Tough to say. You don't have to be the best if you have a differentiating factor. Now, it's very likely that this can become the best. It's also possible it can't. Because with all things AI, it's impossible to see the future. You can't see who the leader's gonna be. You can't see when your approach is going to hit a local maximum and top out. You can throw infinite compute at it and it's not gonna get any better. Uh, if you'd like to learn to play tournament level Tetris, you can. There's all kinds of guides and tricks and tips and things. But that doesn't mean you will ever reach tournament level because we all have our own local maximum. It's the same thing. But what if instead of 
uh, becoming the best Tetris player, you became the funniest Tetris player. What if your goal, your whole thing was, I'm going to go around to these tournaments and be the comic relief? You could make more money than the winners, and you'd make guaranteed money because you've got a differentiating factor that makes you better. A good example of this is within Teslaverse, there are people who are prettier than me, who, who have bigger audiences than me, but I have better information than most of them. I have better insights than most of them because I live and breathe this stuff. And uh, I'm funny. I'm funny. I, I drop a good one every now and then. I try and keep them subtle. So uh, I am even ape. My videos are funny enough that I can even make my own family laugh. And they've heard all my jokes before. <laughs> so just saying, you can win without being the best. I can win, right? I'm a winner. So what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? What do you think the future of Grok is? And should it get more trees behind me? More trees, different trees, better trees, all that good stuff. What should I do, man? I'm counting on you to give me the good advice. Stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the next one.